So, hey, everybody. Uh, as Ben said, my name is Josh Khan. I am a solution architect here at Stripe. This is the office I come to two to three days a week, uh, depending on what week it is. Uh, so what I wanted to explore was how we could take all of the many events that Stripe creates, and we'll talk about those in a minute, and publish them out to the front end, meaning like some sort of user-facing interface. And this is one of my favorites. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite places to also see this idea of events in real life at the airport. Uh, this is me traveling through Germany last year. And it's really interesting because there's all sorts of things going on at the airport all the time. Of course, the most important thing is that my plane is on time. That's not always the reality, but there's all sorts of things happening at the airport, right? A plane lands, a plane pulls up to the gates, my bag gets delivered to the luggage carousel. Sometimes the pilots who you kind of need are also running late. Um, but we need to update these boards to make sure that people get to where they want to be. At least that was the story way back when. Now we've got these handy dandy mobile phones and most airlines are pretty good at sending updates to us these days. It's really easy to go look and see like, what's the status of my flight? And all of this is driven by events, some, some change in state that's happening somewhere else. It's not happening immediately to me and I'm probably not even aware of it. Uh, I might date myself a little bit, but believe it or not, there was a time that the only way you could find out about a flight delay, Brad smiling, was by looking at one of those boards or going and listening to the gate agent. There was no way to go check yourself. It was frustrating for somebody like me who likes to be in control of the situation. But we can take those events and find out when things aren't so happy, right? Maybe there's a weather delay, uh, maybe the aircraft's having some mechanical issues, and we'll find out what's going on with the flight. Luckily here, we're boarding. But all of this is driven by events, some change in state. And we're, when you're dealing with Stripe, there are lots of objects, lots of changes in state. So if I go to process a payment, we call that a payment intent generally, it's gonna get created, it's going to succeed, it's maybe going to fail or be processing for some period of time. If it's a ACH or a e-check, you might call it, it could take days for one of those events to actually make it to us. So when we're dealing with events and we want to make something happen, when an event occurs, we'll broadly call that event-driven architecture, right? So something happens, we want to react. And there's a couple of broad patterns that we can use to find out about those events. So putting this in the context of my airline example again, we have polling. Do we have parents in the room? This is the kids sitting in the back of the car asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? It gets annoying. Polling is not, it works. Polling works in some use cases. Maybe the data is not changing that often. Maybe, you know, you only need to update it every couple hours or even longer periods of minutes. But polling is really easy for most people to go implement. They just set some, some repeating loop with some delay to go check an API. But polling does have some downsides, right? There's some added workload out there. It's a little bit heavier work. Uh, our, our mobile phones are pretty good at battery life these days, but you are burning through some battery, cellular connection. Actually, the hardest thing is figuring out what the delta or the difference was from the current request and the previous request. And even in a simplistic example, that can be a little hard. And if you've ever looked at the Stripe API, our responses can be pretty large. Figuring it out for something like that becomes even a little bit more complex. So my approach generally is to use more of a push-based or subscription type approach. But this relies on some different technologies and that's why it becomes a little bit hard. And that's actually what we'll focus on for most of the talk today. But this is the equivalent of me just turning around and saying to my kids, I'll let you know when we get there, leave me alone, okay? So subscriptions generally though, we're dealing with small amounts of information. If you think about that airport you know, uh, flight board, Frankfurt's a big airport. There was a lot of stuff on there. We're not going to load all of that through a subscription. Generally, we're going to start by going and synchronously loading the kind of starting point. And then we'll use a subscription type approach just to update the flights that need to be updated. Smaller little bits of, of updates. 
Okay, a little bit of terminology before I keep going. You'll probably know this, uh, but when we talk about messaging, we generally have producers who create messages or create events, a message broker that passes it on, and a consumer that receives them. Really simple, right? And then there's also kind of two different ways that we might message, or at least that I want to think about. The first is the broadcast. Basically tell anybody who's interested about all flights coming in or out of Chicago. It's not so specific. Maybe it's the weather outside. Um, or more of a point-to-point -point pattern where I'm looking for something very specific, right? Or maybe I'm just messaging one person or a smaller number of people. Maybe it's uh, my Lumalnati showing up at my doorstep through DoorDash. So to put this into context of Stripe, I like to think about designing my architectures, my integrations with other systems by utilizing events. And there's really two different ways that we can receive events in the world of Stripe. The first is using webhooks. So you're probably familiar with webhooks, but they're just a public endpoint out on the internet. We'll get there, but mobile devices, they don't have those, right? The other option is something like Amazon EventBridge, which is a serverless event bus on AWS. You can connect your uh, Stripe account to deliver events to either a webhook, you have to provide the endpoint, or to AWS, you have to bring your own AWS account. So what happens, uh, we publish an event, maybe a payment intent succeeded, uh, and we're going to publish that event to a webhook here. Uh, in my webhook code, I might choose to do something else in the demo that I'm gonna show. I'm sorry, I don't have cute little skateboarders like Tom. Uh, we'll maybe make another call off to Stripe. And what I'm gonna do is actually orchestrate kind of a point of sale system. It also uses Temporal in the background. And I did that because Tom was here and because I've been meeting to play around with Temporal. Um, but we're gonna go do something else, take kind of the next activity because that happened. And that's how we weave things together with events. But as I said, mobile devices, most front end type interfaces, they don't have a way to consume a webhook or even publish an endpoint to receive them. You maybe could jerry rig something up, but oftentimes this becomes more challenging because we're using a different type of technology to connect to that user interface, to keep it performant, keep it connected. Oftentimes there's different development teams involved. I took a poll of a group we had earlier. Everybody said they were a full stack engineer. That's great. But most of the time in most enterprise customers I work with, there's back end teams and there's front end teams. And the two may get together at an API definition somewhere, but oftentimes they're working separately and making different choices. So there are a few different technologies that you can use to make this connection. Uh, WebSockets, gRPC, push notifications, MQTT, lots of other things, but they all come with some trade-offs. I mean, everything in technical architecture is a trade-off at the end of the day. So I'm going to show you one version of doing this, and at the end, we'll kind of come back to what the options are that you might want to explore, but they generally do come down to the messaging pattern and things like latency to how long it, until you want that message to hit your front end. So I'm going to now attempt to flip over to our demo. Part of this, because it's meant to be like a point of sale, we're going to use a Stripe terminal. So this is an S700. It connects to the Wi-Fi, and I can send it commands over the internet. Basically, it's server-driven. Uh, and I can use this to accept credit cards. OK? Uh, anybody got one? We won't actually accept any money tonight. Um, I'm going to do my best. A cut, only two hands to make this work. So we'll get started. And this is kind of, again, a point of sale type system. And I'm gonna start by going and selecting the reader. Uh, I'm gonna pick the location for my terminal reader. You might have more than one, so we'll just pick reader one. And now I am gonna go add a couple of items to the cart. Uh, one of the guys on our team is a big Diet Coke drinker, so we'll throw a lot into there. Maybe a hamburger as well. And now I'm going to go collect payment, right? So the idea here is that the cashier, maybe like a school concession stand or something, goes and enters that information. And then in order to collect the payment, we're going to go create a payment intent on Stripe. And when that payment intent actually gets created, again, Stripe is going to send that webhook 
uh, send that event to a webhook, which is just running on my laptop right now because I'm using the Stripe CLI to mimic that. Uh, I'm going to actually go push an event or a message out to the front end to indicate that the order has been submitted. And now we're waiting for the customer to do something. So hopefully you saw those little checkboxes light up. Good. So right now we can actually ask the reader to collect information for us, such as an email address. That took a lot of concentration. Um, but I can go enter an email address and actually submit it. And now again, we're going to send, an, send that information back to Stripe through the terminal API. Stripe is going to send another event, lots of events flowing around. And that will let us know that the terminal has finished collecting that input or that information and that it's ready uh, to move on to the next step. So now we can actually go and present our payment. And you can see here too that it's also showing on the terminal screen, not just what our total is, but also the all of the items in our cart. So maybe as the person working at the concession stand, I'll ask the per, you know the, the customer, hey, just double check, I got everything. So I will actually present my handy dandy little Stripe credit card. And now I can go and click process payment because I've already presented my card and it's gonna go complete that payment intent in the background. And then we've published all of those events up to the front end, which is really a better user experience uh, because now the cashier is better able to interact with the end customer and have a better idea of what's going on. Um, so how did this work? Uh, so I used something called Memento Topics. So Memento is uh, another company that's out there uh, founded by some folks we know. Uh, it's mostly they do serverless caching, uh, but they also have Topics, which is based on gRPC. Why did I choose Memento? Because it was really easy for me to go implement, but I really could have used any of the technologies that I mentioned earlier. So what's happening here is that Stripe is going to go publish an event to a webhook or EventBridge if I want it to. And I just go and wire that up in the Stripe dashboard or through the CLI. It's going to go let me know when a payment intent gets created or in the case of uh, entering my email address, when an action succeeded on the terminal. By the way, you can filter for only the events you want when you go and configure that event destination with Stripe. And if you're doing more than testing, you might want to do that, especially if you get really popular because the scale of events can actually be something you got to think about, right? Scalability matters. EventBridge does a pretty good job of, of handling that scale. But if you're running your own webhook and it's running on like a single EC2 instance, might fall over at some point, maybe not. Uh, so our event handler, our webhook is going to actually go and inspect that JSON payload, the event that we received. It's going to figure out what to do next. Uh, I'm using the order ID, like this, a, a randomly generated UUID, to keep track of the workflow in temporal. Uh, and that's how I go and look up what's the next step in this workflow to do next, right? Is it to collect payment? Is it to process the payment? And then it's going to go pr uh, publish what I called an order created event. And then on the subscriber side, there's also kind of a, a client side SDK for Memento, for EventBridge, for all of these, where you can go and listen for those events to get published back for you. And again, that's a spot where you can filter things out or only subscribe to events of interest. Um, in a real life scenario, I would probably only listen for events relevant to my point of sale, but for a demo, I didn't do that. So with EventBridge, you do have a little bit more flexibility. Stripe can be sending all sorts of events. You could filter if you want, or you could have EventBridge filter it out. And then you can also have EventBridge make some decisions about how to route those events to different targets. Uh, so maybe I have an event like at the, at the bottom there where I wanna put it into an SQS queue. I wanna make sure that I process that event. Uh, maybe it's updating loyalty points, right? I wanna make sure that you get your loyalty points for buying those hamburgers. And then you could also use something like AppSync Events. Uh, AppSync is a managed GraphQL service, but AppSync Events is really just good at publishing out events to something like the front end, kind of like Memento is. Really easy to go and set up and then integrate into your front end apps. So that's again, just one of the options that you have. 
So this is just showing how to, you can do some of that filtering with EventBridge. It looks a lot like JSON. It kind of is JSON to filter. Uh, and then you can also do a transformation right in line as well. So I actually, in a demo that we're not going to look at today, I actually take that Stripe event and go grab some fields that I think are interesting from it, including the serial number for the terminal. And then I use that as part of the payload that I send to AppSync events. And then it just goes and sends it out directly. I don't have to call any compute of any kind. It just all happens right in line. So there are some other architectural considerations. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, we actually had somebody in a couple of uh, at the last meetup that we did here in Chicago talking about some of these concepts as well uh, from HookDeck, right? Yep, HookDeck. So you do have to think about how do I scale up to handle large amount numbers of events. Events can also sometimes kind of come out of order or they might be duplicated. What are you going to do? Temporal can help sometimes. And then idempotency is the hard word, uh, but basically idempotency is if I, if I get multiple identical requests, I want to make sure that I always produce the same result, right? Otherwise, you get some weird side effects. So just things to think about. But really what drives your decision and how you connect your, your back end to your front end, right? which technology you want to take, really is driven by the messaging patterns that you want to enable. If I want broadcast or point-to-point -point messaging, there might be one option. Some of these offer one or two, one way only or two-way communication. So if you're building something like a chat application where the client actually needs to send things back to the server, of course, two-way is going to make a difference. Um, I also included some sample implement implementations. There are a lot of other options out there that you can think about. And then latency matters as well, uh, maybe. In my point of sale use case, probably a little bit less so. So with that, thank you very much.